an AI revolution is upon us. With each passing day, AI tools spring up that aggressively blur the lines separating reality and machine-generated content. In fact, the distinction has become so distorted that it's difficult to distinguish between what's fake and real. You can now get AI to do a professional headshot for your LinkedIn profile in a matter of seconds and save yourself time and money all with the click of a few buttons. While it might feel like AI has come out of nowhere, computer scientists have been working for decades to get to this point. So in this five-part series, we will journey through the road to AI by first going back in time, unearthing the origins of this life-changing technology with the pioneers in computer science. We will then look at the rise of expert systems, the emergence of machine learning, the deep learning revolution, and finally explore the present and future of AI. So, in this episode, we're going to take a step back in time and explore the origins of AI. Now, it's normal for us as intelligent beings to reason, discover meaning, and learn from our past experience. These attributes are actually part of what makes us intelligent beings. For example, let's say you're walking along a path and suddenly trip. You subconsciously learn to be more careful and look where you're going. But computers haven't been able to learn in the same way. Prior to AI, coders had to write explicit instructions to handle trips or any errors that the software encountered. But humans have been working for decades to solve this, in search of a way to allow computers to learn for themselves, which is what the whole field of artificial intelligence is about. AI is ever-present in our everyday life, from minor applications you rarely even think of, such as the personalized recommendation on your YouTube homepage or autocorrect on your phone, it has found its way to traditional institutions and professions like healthcare, where we now have AI-assisted diagnosis, drug development, and even offering personalized treatment. Entertainment such as gaming has also never been better, from realistic characters and gaming experience to personalized challenges. And these are just baby steps towards the more advanced roles AI can play. But before we get all caught up in the advanced stuff, let us go back to ground zero, where the idea virus that broke out today as the AI revolution started. Looking back, we can trace the origin of AI back to two branches of thought, ancient philosophy and mathematics. So, as ancient minds sat to think deeply and ponder the nature of human reasoning and thought unknown to them, they were laying the foundation of the computational understanding of logic and what would eventually lead to the birth of AI. You see, the desire to create beings just like us is one that is arguably as old as man. We have always been fascinated with the idea of creating beings with human-like abilities, and this has roots in the mind of ancient philosophers. In ancient Greece, for example, unknown to them, philosophers like Plato and Aristotle laid the groundwork of some essential components of what would become artificial intelligence. Particularly, the great mind Aristotle developed the principles of formal logic, which centuries later became an essential aspect of AI. However, all these would be classified as baby steps, because it was not until the 19th and early 20th centuries that the journey would actually begin. It all started with the development of mathematical logic that paved the way for the computational understanding of logic. But this was possible thanks to the contribution of one man, George Boole. So, Boole was an English mathematician that introduced a form of algebra known as the Boolean algebra. This essentially deals with truth values and logical operations. It would eventually form the foundation for digital electronics and much of what we know today as computer science. However, it still took the work of another philosopher and mathematician to push things closer home. Enter Gottlob Frege, a German philosopher and mathematician. Frege went to work on the foundation laid by Boole to introduce a groundbreaking concept in logic known as the predicate logic or the first order logic. This concept was groundbreaking because for the first time, more complex relationships were expressed and analyzed. But the journey towards developing AI was more like a relay race where each athlete did their own part and handed the baton to the next. After Frege came two scientists who made a significant contribution to the history of AI, Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts. In 1943, Warren and Walter released a paper, a logical calculus of the ideas imminent in nervous activity. And for the first time, logic was married with biology. Detailing this alliance, Warren and Walter introduced the artificial neurons as simplified models of biological neurons. They also demonstrated how these artificial neurons could be combined to carry out logical operations. Now this marked the birth of artificial neural networks, but one man who would stand as the most influential figures in the history of AI and generally computer science is the British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing. Now, two important events mark a crucial point in the history of AI. One was the Turing test and the other was the birth of artificial intelligence as a discipline. But let's stick to the Turing test for now. In the 1930s, 
Turing developed a machine known as the Turing machine, which was basically a theoretical machine. But this machine opened us up to the possibility of solving problems and performing various tasks using algorithms that would eventually serve as the basis for what we know today as digital computers. In 1950, Turing took things one notch higher with his earth-shattering paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. And once again, for the first time, humans teased the possibility of a machine producing intelligent behavior that cannot be distinguished from that of a human. In Turing's work, he proposed a test to determine if a machine could produce human-like intelligent behavior that was so good that you can't distinguish them from that of a human. This test became known as the Turing test. Basically, this involves a human judge engaging in a natural language conversation with a human and a machine simultaneously to test for a difference between both. Now, if the human judge cannot reliably distinguish between the human and machine response then, the machine would have passed the test, exhibiting human-like intelligence. Although there are some arguments that this test has its own flaws, it has become a sort of benchmark for AI researchers to develop machines capable of performing human-like activities and mimicking human intelligence. And we can also say that before Turing, there was no scientific discipline known as artificial intelligence, but after him, the discipline was birthed. However, it was still not a formal mainstream field of research at this point. So when did AI go mainstream? When did it become an actual field of research? In the early 1950s, the scientific community referred to AI with various names, from thinking machines to cybernetics, automator theory and complex information processing. There was no really clear consensus on nomenclature or even what was part of the field. In the midst of this confusion was John McCarthy, a young assistant professor at Dartmouth College. You see, McCarthy had followed the scholarly submissions to one of the major journals of mathematics at the time, the Annals of Mathematical Studies, and he was disappointed by the submissions. His disappointment was majorly because the contributors focused only on the computer's potential to perform simple behaviors. He went through paper after paper, frustrated at their inability to look beyond the basics and to focus on the computer's potential to possess higher intelligence that were even human-like. After giving the problem much thought, McCarthy came to one conclusion. This problem can only be solved if we gather a group of like minds to clarify and develop ideas about thinking machines. According to him, at the time I believed if only we could get everyone who was interested in the subject together to devote time to it and avoid distractions, we could make real progress. With this idea in mind, he approached the Rockefeller Foundation for a summer seminar at Dartmouth College. And in 1955, together with some colleagues from Harvard, IBM and Bell Labs, he formally proposed the project birthing the famous Dartmouth workshop. The proposal for the Dartmouth conference was iconic because it was in that document that the term artificial intelligence was coined. In the document, McCarthy and his friend Minsky from Harvard proposed a two-month, 10-man study of artificial intelligence in the summer of 1956 at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. And according to them, the study is based on the conjecture that every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. And they outlined seven aspects of artificial intelligence the workshop was to focus on. They include automatic computers, how a computer can be programmed to use a language, neuron nets, theory of the size of a calculation, self-improvement, abstractions, randomness, and creativity. In the summer, 1956, with 20 participants attending the workshop on and off, the ground was laid for the new field called AI. So in the end, the eight weeks workshop, though not frequently attended by the participants, produced some tangible results. First off, the term artificial intelligence was coined, so also was machine learning by Samuel Arthur, who went on to create the world's first successful self-learning program. Others were the information processing language and the logic theory machine. Let's hear your thoughts on the place of the Dartmouth conference on the development of AI. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. That said, Despite the optimism that followed the Dartmouth conference, the momentum would eventually stall after some years. However, this is all we will take in this episode. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to Tectonic Shift, and smash the notification bell to be a part of the next episode as we take a deep dive into the famous AI winter. See you in the next one.